There are very few cameras out there that are as popular as the X100V. From its shooting experience to its design aesthetics, it's a beautifully crafted camera that works pretty much for any type of photographer. I've owned this camera since its launch in 2020, and through my experience using this intensively for street photography, there are a few changes I've made in camera that have really gone a long way in helping make this camera get less in the way of what I'm trying to do. Because let's face it, unless you're shooting with an analog film camera, digital cameras can do a heck of a lot. A lot of things that you don't necessarily need to do or want to do. And so occasionally those things start to get in your way when you're using the camera. And as photographers, cameras are our tools and they shouldn't be getting in the way of what we're trying to do. I love this camera for many reasons, but like pretty much any other digital camera out there, there have been times where it's gotten in my way. So in this video, I'll be sharing six in-camera changes that I've made to my X100V that help make it a simpler camera, a more pure photography camera that, you know, doesn't get in the way of what you're trying to do. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So by default, your camera wants to tell you everything about itself. What's enabled, what's disabled, all the things that it can do. Um, a lot of things you don't necessarily need to know when you're taking photos. Personally, when I'm out shooting, especially street photography, there's really a few things that I need to see um, on the back screen of my LCD. And that's my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, as well as the camera's current battery level and the remaining photos I have left on my SD card. So things like my film simulation, the autofocus mode, uh, dynamic range, my photometry settings, you know, those are nice things to know about, but I don't necessarily need them on my screen screen or in my face while looking through the EVF in order to take a photo. Since I have my photometry setting programmed to this button on my X100V, I can quickly find out what metering mode I am in by hitting that. To know what film simulation I am in, I can quickly see what that is going through the playback screen. And for something like the autofocus mode, I know what that is just by simply seeing what the autofocus is doing when I use autofocus. You don't need these things on your screen. You can find out what pretty much any of these settings are by going into your playback menu because they're already listed there. So to quickly clean all of this up, you can go to the setup menu, screen setup, and then find display custom setting. For the EVF and LCD, I have this set to just the focus frame. That's the little autofocus square that you see. The aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, frames remaining, and the battery level. As for the OVF, that's the optical viewfinder on the X100V, I have this only set to show the focus frame. And this makes for a super clean OVF that shows only the frame line and your focus point. A little change like this goes a long way because it just makes the shooting experience that much more enjoyable. You have less visual distractions all over the screen that, you know, takes away from what you're really trying to focus on, and that's the composition. So pre-AF is one of those first settings that I turn off with every new camera. It's usually on by default because it caters for the beginner photographer. What pre-AF basically means is wherever you point your camera, your camera is going to focus on what the focus frame is set on. Now that might seem like a great concept and something you would want your camera to do, but in my experience, it gets in the way more than it really helps you. So say I'm out doing street photography and I have a subject that's already in focus. The second I move my camera in a different direction off of my subject, the camera is going to focus again. And yeah, focusing on new cameras is super fast, so it might not take that much time. But when we're dealing with something like street photography, where just a fraction of a second of time that's lost, that can be enough to completely ruin a shot. So I highly recommend to new and experienced photographers using this camera to turn off pre-AF. Go into the autofocus menu setting, right in the bottom here, you'll see pre-AF. You know, when it comes to something like autofocus, it just makes sense to, you know, have control over that and, you know, not have the camera do that on its own. You should have final say on when your camera's focusing. So the focus lever is one of those things that allows you to change where your focus point is. However, on the X100V, it's basically this knob that sticks out on the back side of the camera and if you've ever used the X100V um, with the focus lever 
enabled, there's a good chance you've run into a similar situation. So you're out walking, doing some street photography with your X100V, and you notice an awesome moment that's quickly unfolding. And you raise your camera up to take a photo of that moment, but you completely miss focus because your focus frame is in the bottom left corner. The culprit would be the focus lever and you accidentally hitting it at some point or brushing it up against your body and it toggling and moving your focus frame to God knows where. This has happened to me so many times and I've missed a handful of photos because of it. So it's a good thing that you can lock it and never worry about that again. Go to the button dial setting, focus lever, and lock. So while we're on the topic of autofocus, there's a small tip that I learned very late in my Fujifilm uh, experience, and that's the ability to change the size of your focus point. There's a good chance if you're new to the Fujifilm systems, you didn't know about this, and I didn't know about it very late, so no shame if you didn't know about it. To change the size of your autofocus point, go to the autofocus setting menu, and go to the focus area setting, and once this window comes up, you can basically use the back dial or front dial to change the size of the focus frame. This is really great because I think by default it's a pretty relatively large focus frame and sometimes it's hard to get a pinpoint accurate uh, focus because maybe there's multiple subjects in your focus frame and you're trying to get your camera to focus on the right thing. Uh, changing the size of your focus frame, making it smaller, it's going to be a much more accurate way for the camera to know what you want it to focus on. Personally, on my X100V, I have the focus frame to the second to smallest frame. This just gives me a precise yet still easy to see focus frame to work with. Every Fujifilm camera has a quick menu and that's where you put all of your you know, once in a while settings in a nice easy to access menu system. However, it's really easy to put a whole bunch of things you don't really need in your quick menu. I've done this before. I've used to use, you know, 16 different slots, which just a bunch of different things I rarely ever used. And it really defeated the purpose of a quick menu because it took me forever to find the actual thing I wanted to, you know, go to in the quick menu. So start off by simplifying how many slots you're using. And next, when it comes to choosing what to put in your quick menu, my main philosophy is to basically do the once in a while things that aren't already programmed to your you know, physical custom buttons on your camera. Personally, for me, that's my film simulation, self-timer, autofocus mode, and ND filter. So definitely take the time to go through your quick menu and try to downsize it to the things you really only occasionally need. When the time comes that you quickly need to access the quick menu, it will be a quick process because there aren't a lot of things that you don't really ever use in your way. Any other rare occasion settings that you do want to easily find, you can save that to the user menu settings window, which basically when you hit the menu setting on your camera, it will be the first set of settings that are shown. It's pretty much a second quick menu. Last but not least, you can lock a whole other bunch of function settings. And this is something you might not have known about. Um, something I haven't known about for a very long time till kind of recently, unfortunately. <laughs> um, most Fujifilm cameras have this dial. It's called the exposure dial, and it might just be the bane of my existence. Okay, that's a little extreme, but I always accidentally turn this dial when I don't want to, and it can easily ruin a whole day of shooting for me because, you know, if you don't know what the exposure compensation dial does, so basically your camera it exposes for a scene, right? Um, with exposure compensation, you can either increase exposure or decrease exposure easily by turning this dial. It comes in really handy for something like landscape photography, uh, but for street photography, what I mostly shoot, I've never needed to use exposure compensation. And unfortunately, there are times when I do use the compensation dial because I accidentally turned it. I'll go an entire day shooting, not realizing I had my exposure compensation to uh, minus three stops of light. And then realizing, oh, that's why all my photos look so dark. Not a fun time, but you can actually lock the whole dial where you can turn it 
and nothing will happen. Go to the button dial setting and all the way at the bottom of the second page, you'll see lock. Go into lock, go into lock setting and do select function, function selection and choose exposure compensation. This is the only one I have on because I use all the other function buttons, but you know, maybe there's another function button. Maybe it's the drive delete button on your camera. Um, maybe you've accidentally hit that and changed your drive mode to, you know, the self timer by accident. Turn that on and you won't have to worry about that again. So take the time to go through this menu and see if there's any other function buttons that get in your way too. So those are six in-camera changes I've made on my X100V that help make it a much more simplified tool that hardly gets in the way of my street photography anymore. Each one of these changes have likely saved myself from not getting a particular shot. And, you know, as a street photographer, that's invaluable. Before I even had the knowledge I could do some of these things, you know, it was a little frustrating, you know, sometimes having, you know, your focus frame somewhere you don't want it to be or accidentally hitting the compensation dial. I'm glad I can share this knowledge with you guys and I hope, you know, if there's any of you who didn't know about these things, it's going to help improve your shooting experience. So thanks for sticking to the end of this one and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for anyone looking to build a photography portfolio. They have easy to use photography templates, e-commerce controls, and social media integration. My Squarespace site has pretty much become a one-stop shop for all things related to me and my photography. And I've been using it for the last five years as it's my preferred way to show all of my recent favorite work. I also have a digital storefront on there where I sell all of my presets and LUTs. So I was actually recently in Abu Dhabi working with their tourism board taking photos of their country. And so I wanted to take advantage of all of the new work that I created there and make a dedicated travel page. I want this page to look very professional as possible and with Squarespace that was super easy to do. It's great to have a page like this on your site because you never know who's looking through your portfolio and what kind of potential opportunities could happen. So you know if you've been just running with an Instagram page to show your work all of this time, consider trying out Squarespace by hitting the link in the description to get a 14 day free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, you can head over to squarespace.com slash Faisal for 10% off your first purchase. Okay guys, leave any questions or comments you have related to this topic in the comment section. I'll try my best to get to as many of you as I can. So with that said, I'll see you all in the next one.